How's it going everybody? Advoker here. It's a little breezy out here, but we're at the park and we're gonna try and fly the Mavic 2 Pro. Reason being, I've got Freewheel Gear's new variable ND filters made for the DJI Mavic 2 Pro from Freewell. I guess they're not really that new. This is a two-pack filter set and variable means that they can change by just turning them. Now don't get these confused with polarized filters. This is a neutral density filter kit, which is going to darken our image depending on how much we turn the filter. It's actually pretty cool, let me show you. Here's the filter pack, it's just two, and these can accomplish pretty much everything that those four or even eight pack filters that I've reviewed before can do. Uh, so you open it up, you got the two filters there, and if you can see right there at the top, it says two, three, four, five. So that's how much this is darkening your image. So uh, F2 would be ND4, F3 would be ND8, and so on up the scale. Now on a day like today, that's really convenient because when I started the video just literally a couple minutes ago, it was cloudy and now it's sunny. So obviously things are changing on us. It's getting dark, it's getting bright. And instead of swapping out filters again and again and again, turning the filter adjusts how much light is coming through the filter. So if you need this dark of a filter, there you go. If you need this dark of a filter, well, there you go. Now with the Mavic 2 Pro, without the filters, there are a couple different ways to darken your image. You can either adjust your aperture, so you can go very, very wide open aperture, or you could, you know, kind of close it down and get a much darker image. Or you can adjust your shutter speed from like, you know, twice your frame rate all the way up to one eight thousandth of a second or something crazy. There are some situations where you don't want to do either. You know, I think the sweet spot for sharpness for the Mavic 2 Pro is around uh, f4.0, 4.5. I usually fly between like 4.0 to 5.6 because I find that's sharpest with the Mavic 2 Pro. And then if you have too high of a shutter speed, you're going to lose all of your motion blur. And a lot of times we want to have some motion blur in our image. That's, that makes the, the footage look natural to us. If you don't have any motion blur, it looks choppy and uh, it just doesn't look as good to my eyes anyway. So if you don't want to close your aperture all the way and you don't want to raise your shutter speed all the way, you've got to use a filter like these. With the f-stops that go from six to nine, uh, I'm looking at my scale here, that's the equivalent of ND64 all the way to ND512. Maybe you're doing time-lapse photography and you want to get a snapshot of this street uh, over here with the cars or maybe a waterfall. If it's in full-on sun, you've got to have some sort of really, really slow shutter speed, but then something like this to drastically darken your image so you can have that one second shutter speed or two second shutter speed or whatever you need. Now, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes this glass that comes stock on the Mavic 2 Pro, it's a little bit hard to get off, but you turn while you're supporting the camera, you turn and it pops off just like that. We're gonna take this one right here and there's only one way it goes on because one of these tabs is a little bit thicker than the other and pop right on there and then turn and twist very gently. Come on, there we go. Now right now, if I had to guess, we probably only need about three stops of light to be uh, cut from our image here. So you can see right there, we uh, have selected the little tiny number three with the arrow. And now we're good to go with essentially an ND8. Spread the props all apart. All right, start her up. All right, so we're in the drones view here. And I'm looking right now, I do have the overexposure warnings turned on, which are those zebra stripes kind of going around. I also have a histogram at the bottom right of the controller screen. And I can already see right now that using um, aperture, aperture 4.5, shutter 1 60th, which is twice my, my frame rate of 30 frames a second, and an ISO of 100 is still a little on the bright side. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go down there, turn it just a hair darker, more like a F 3.5 down here. Now from here, we have it up in the sky. If I wanna put it up to like F 5, I definitely can. I'm looking at these clouds though, that looks okay. Let me turn off the overexposure warning and just see the picture. The city here is starting to get overcast. These clouds are coming in and out. So I'm in high quality mode right now. F5 on the camera aperture. All right, so just getting a shot here. I'm looking for vignetting and stuff like that. Sometimes with these filters, you can see a little bit of a dark 
sort of haze around the edges of the, the shot, but I don't actually see anything like that. That's good. Those clouds look really vivid on this side. Now, as I turn the camera, you can kind of see the sky brightens up a little bit. So over here, the sky is a little bit brighter than it was over there. But there's no polarized filter here. There's no polarization. It's just ND. So if I'm following cars on the street here, um, it actually looks a little bit better. See the cars that are moving the opposite direction? You can see there's a little bit of motion blur on those cars. Let me go the opposite direction here. So I would consider this filter, the, the first one, the F2 through 5, to be a video filter, something you'd use frequently shooting video with the Mavic 2 Pro. The other one, the one that goes from 6 to 9, or ND, what was it, 64 to 512 or something crazy, I think that that's more of a time-lapse photography filter, so I'm gonna switch it out, put that one on. All right, so we've got the other filter on now, I can see right now the image is very, very dark. Uh, pretty much unusable in this state. However, I'm going to switch to photography mode. And I'm going to lower my shutter speed really far. I don't even know how far we're going to be able to get it. Uh, 1, 1 1.67 seconds. So I'm going to put this down the ground. We're going to take off and see. We're at F8 now. So it's not as dark as I thought it might get. Um, the ND512 is, is decent, but it could be even darker. But anyway, so aperture F8. Now I'm not over the highway, I'm close, but I'm a couple feet to the right. And I'm gonna tap to focus, wait for some cars to go by and hit the shutter button. Uh, having ND512 or the equivalent uh, nine f-stops of light reduction is pretty much essential for this type of shot. You gotta have a really dark filter in order to accomplish this. I'm gonna follow the cars and see if I can blur the location, but not the car. I'm not sure if this is even gonna be possible. We'll, we'll see. Now we got some shadow on the skyline, which is not prime, but what I wanna do is fly toward the city. And the city shouldn't move that much. It's, the buildings are so huge. If I fly toward it, it should stay relatively clear. But what should actually change is, or get blurry, is the ground nearer to the camera. So on the bottom and on the sides of the image. Let's see uh, if that's gonna lend a good image or not. Well, my impression of the filters is positive. Um, I don't find any issue with them. You know, I, I guess I wouldn't mind if the uh, second filter went up to ND1000 or 1024. That'd be pretty cool. But otherwise, even at ND512, which is uh, the nine value here on the f-stop range on the side of this, um, that's significant for me. And I was able to get some really nice time-lapse photography and the fact that today has been so frustrating with cloudy, sunny, cloudy, sunny, with differing exposures, the ability to have a variable ND filter and just dial it in as needed is really cool. And then the fact also that this is a small form factor, so this can fit into your bag, into your pocket. There's really no drone bag that can't fit something this small. So. I think it's a win. I do appreciate Freewell Gear for saying it to me. I didn't notice any vignetting or any colorization of the, the photos and the footage. And that's exactly what you want out of a neutral density filter. You don't want this to colorize your footage. You just want it to darken it to get your proper exposure as needed. So anyway, I think it's pretty cool. Check the video description down below for a link. And um, thank you Freewell again for sending them to me. And until next time, happy flying.